A single cyclist was coming slowly down the street, and as he approached, Mr. Tompkins' eyes opened wide with astonishment, for the bicycle and the young man on it were unbelievably shortened in the direction of motion. He borrowed somebody's bicycle standing near the curb and sped down the street. The picture around him completely changed. The streets grew shorter, the windows of the shops began to look like narrow slits, and the policeman on the corner became the thinnest man he had ever seen. So this image of relativity painted by the legendary physicist George Gamow is very convincing. And there is only one problem. It is completely wrong. Welcome back to the 13th episode of my online course on special relativity. My name is Andrzej Dragan. I'm a professor of theoretical physics <coughs> at the University of Warsaw and National University of Singapore. And today we'll try to figure out why George Gamow's description of an alternative reality in which the speed of light is only 20 km per hour is completely incorrect. And how to fix it. <laughs> It is true that moving objects are shortened along the direction of motion. It's called Lorentz contraction. But this does not mean that this is how we will see those objects. Notice that what we actually see is not the real shapes of the objects, but light emitted by them that reaches our eyes at some delay. Ever seen a distant plane in the sky and notice how its sound arrives at us from a different location at which the plane was a while ago? It's exactly the same with the vision of moving objects at relativistic speeds. They will appear to be distorted because it takes finite time for the light from those objects to reach us. And that extra time varies depending on the position at which the light was emitted from. So let's have a look at a simple example. Consider a circle that in its own resting prime frame of reference is given by the equation x prime squared plus y prime squared equals r squared. And imagine that the circle is now moving with some velocity v so that the Lorentz contraction makes an ellipse shortened along the direction of motion. Let us now describe the equation of the circle in the unprimed frame of reference in which the circle is moving along the direction x. So, in order to find the equation in that frame, we will simply apply the Lorentz transformation to the equation of the circle, and that gives us the equation of the ellipse lying in the plane z equals to some d. And now let us ask an interesting question. Suppose that at the origin of the unprimed frame of reference, there is a camera that takes a snapshot of the moving circle at some time t0. In order to find the shape of the circle captured in camera, we have to realize that what is seen in camera is not the actual shape of the circle, but just a bunch of light rays that reach the camera at the time t0. So let's consider a ray that leaves the moving circle at some time t and at position x, y, and z. And the time at which the ray is emitted is equal to t0 minus the time it takes light to move from the circle to the camera, which is simply the mutual distance divided by the speed of light. And now all we have to do is just treat those equations as a set and rule out from them t, which will leave us with the equation for x, y, and z as a function of t0. And therefore, we will be able to characterize the shape captured on the photograph as a function of time at which we take the snapshot. The resulting equation is a fourth order equation, which is quite hard to analyze analytically but it's pretty straightforward to plot that equation numerically. And we have made these plots, and they show how a moving circle will appear to a resting observer at equal time intervals. A moving circle does not appear to be an ellipse at all. When it approaches us, it seems to be stretched rather than contracted. And when it passes us by, it slows down and bends itself into some sort of banana or sausage that has nothing to do with the real shape of the circle, which is a contracted ellipse. So what we can see here is some sort of a relativistic optical illusion, because the real shape of a moving circle is elliptic. And what we can see in this example is far from that. 
So let's try to analyze a slightly more complicated example. We can now repeat the whole procedure for a more complicated shape, such as a bicycle. A bicycle essentially is a bunch of circles and lines. So we can analyze each of them separately using our equations and then compose them together to investigate how a bicycle will appear to us when moving with relativistic velocity. And once again, the result that we obtain is completely different from what George Gawoff described in his book. The approaching bicycle seems to be stretched rather than contracted. And when it moves away from us, it becomes distorted in a cartoonish, funny way. As we can see, the alternative reality of George Gamow's universe, in which the speed of light is only 20 km per hour, would be full of eccentric optical illusions. And so far we have only discussed the apparent shapes of moving objects. And what about their colors? Let us consider a simple point like source of light that moves with certain velocity, call it v, relative to a distant observer. And suppose that that observer detects the emitted light, and the question is, how does the motion of the source of light affect the observed color? To investigate it, let's consider a plane wave that is emitted by the source, and suppose that the two consecutive crests of the wave were emitted at instance Ta and Tb, with an index E denoting the emission. Let us also denote that the source was located at the distances Ra and Rb at those two instants of time. The first crest is registered at an instant TaO for observed at some later time that is delayed by the time it takes light to travel from the source to the observer. And we have a similar delay for the second crest B. These two expressions allow us to compute the observed wavelength by simply multiplying the time difference at which the crests are observed by the speed of light. We can also express that time difference in terms of observations made from the frame of reference co-moving with the source of light, and that will give us the extra Lorentz factor. And also notice that the last term in our expression is simply an instantaneous radial velocity of the source. And by identifying the wavelength defined in the frame of reference co-moving with the source, lambda zero, we find a relation between that wavelength and the one observed in the frame of reference at which the source is moving with velocity v. And the difference between the two is called the Doppler effect. In a moment, we will find out that the light of objects moving away from us seems to be redshifted, while the light emitted by objects that move towards us is blue-shifted. And that's why some people claim that the headlights of cars approaching us are white, while the tail lamps of cars moving away are red. But things can get slightly more tricky. In the case of simple one-dimensional motion, this whole formula reduces to something much simpler, where the wavelength is scaled by the square root of 1 plus v over c over 1 minus v over c, which is known as the Doppler factor. And according to this formula, if a source of light is moving away from the observer, the wavelength is increased, redshifting the color of light, and when the source is approaching the observer, the light is blue shifted. Another interesting case takes place when the source is circulating around the observer so that the radial velocity is equal to zero, and in this case, the color of light is still redshifted due to the time dilation effect affecting the source. And one more slightly more surprising situation takes place when the source is slowly approaching the observer, but along a spiral trajectory, so that the time dilation still dominates, and although the source approaches the observer, the color of light can be still redshifted. <laughs> It is useful to ask a question, how would a plane moving along itself appear to us if it was painted as a given color? For example, a green plane moving along itself would look like this. 
and for sufficiently high velocities, the region far to the left and far to the right would appear to us completely dark because our eyes are unable to see the infrared nor ultraviolet end of the spectrum. So if a moving bicycle from the previous example was painted green, it would appear to us as the intersection of the shape that we have just discussed and that plane full of rainbows. So first it would appear to be completely black, then it would emerge through the rainbow colors, and then when moving away, it would fade to black again. I discuss more interesting examples in my textbook on relativity called Unusually Special Relativity, so check out the link in the description. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I'll try to answer them, and I'll see you in the next one. Get out of here.